Good evening. Good evening. And welcome to Nightcast. I should have said good night. <laughs> no, I guess no. good night's good more like good a night. goodbye. Yeah, good night's like a goodbye. <laughs> welcome to Nightcast, our first nighttime podcast. The lighting will not be good. No. <laughs> We're not even going to bother putting a background on the green screen. So enjoy seeing a kind of behind the scenes of mm-hmm. Kick and Erica podcast. We tried to film one earlier, but it didn't really go great. So we thought we'd do one at night. Yeah. We're in our pajamas. <laughs> we have some nice tea. Got some candles I'm going. Eating. Yeah. It's going to be nice. Yeah. Oh. What do you guys do in the evening? <laughs> like to wind down. Yeah, do you have like a ritual? I just sit in bed for like four hours before I fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably not super healthy no. on your phone, right? Yeah, we're watching stuff. Yeah, that's true. I mean, if we're watching stuff together, I feel like that's better. How's that better? <laughs> well, we're spending time together. If you're just on your phone by yourself, then. I guess. Oh, that tea's hot. What kind of tea do you have? I have some Moroccan mint. It's got a little bit of green tea. It's a little bit of caffeine. I'm planning on staying up a little bit later tonight, so. What kind of tea do you have? I have, I can't remember what it's called. Sleepy time. Sleepy time. Nice. I wanted well rested from Trader Joe's, but we're out of it. So that's yeah. the closest thing we had. Yeah, Trader Joe's. I love Trader Joe's. Why can't we have it in Canada? We had Pirate Joe's. Yeah, the Trader Joe's knockoff. Literally importing Trader Joe's products. Yeah, this guy would drive down to Bellingham from Vancouver, go to Trader Joe's, and just buy a crap ton of stuff, and then sell it to Canadians in Vancouver. He had his own store called Pirate Joe's. Yeah, I think that's what you just said, Pirate Joe's. No, that is it? I I don't, I don't know. So. I don't know. Anyways. And then they tried to sue him, and... He won. Yeah. But because of, like, costs and stuff. I mean, I know, like, Trader Joe's lost, so they had to pay his legal fees. But I think because of all the time that he spent, like, not in the store because of the trial, he couldn't afford to keep it open. Yeah. Which really sucks. They got him in the end. Or maybe, maybe they paid him to... Yeah, maybe there was something else legally that they did to stop him from, other than suing him, right? Maybe Mm -hmm. they tried to get money out of him because they felt like they were losing money through him. I mean, the thing is, if they didn't want to lose money through somebody doing something like that, then they should just open a Trader Joe's in Canada. He's buying the products from them at full price. Yeah. It's not like a, like another retailer where they get it discounted. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. He's paying full price. Yeah. Or was <laughs> plus more because he would have to pay he'd be whatever paying Canadian. He'd be paying Canadian, but he'd also be paying to ship it, like to move it himself, right mm, across the, the border, gas. all the gas and everything. Yeah. yeah. Although I'm sure he was buying gas down in Bellingham because yeah. it's cheaper. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the lengths that we'll go to to consume products. Trader Joe's is so good, though. It is. I mean, the thing is, it's almost like a health food store in the way that all their stuff is usually pretty natural and healthy. Mm. Um. And, and, like, affordable. It's not like, um, you know, uh, Whole Foods where you kind of pay a premium for Trader Joe's is products. so cheap. Like, I can't believe it. A box of, like, frozen mac and cheese. Okay, to put this in perspective, Michelinas, I am not shouting them out. This is shade. <laughs> <laughs> You're shading them out. Michelinas sucks. It, it's this crappy little freezer-burnt noodles that are like hard and like the cheese is like fake and disgusting those are like a dollar fifty here in in what's it called trader joe's they have those frozen mac and cheeses that are like double the size of michelinas they're four cheese they have like friggin gruyere like two different types <laughs> anything of that cheddar. has gruyere in it oh, you are man, sold don't even get me started and the noodles are amazing and it's like the same price, a dollar fifty or something. Really, I thought it was more. Or like but, two bucks, but it's like, yeah. it's so cheap. 
I guess it's close to three dollars Canadian. Yeah. But that's the thing is what upsets me right now. The Canadian dollar is not doing oh, very it's well. Because <laughs> I think I just looked up. Why did I look up how much two hundred dollars was two hundred dollars American was Canadian? I don't know. I can't remember. I googled it because I think I was thinking of buying something that was two hundred dollars. I can't remember now. Mm. I blanked. Um, I don't think it was two hundred dollars, but you looked up um, something for your computer that you were gonna buy from like a the the um the person who the factory. Oh. Remember? Oh, no, I looked up two hundred. I looked up two hundred dollars because that's roughly what the the CPU I want to buy that's coming out is gonna be two hundred dollars American. There we go. That's that's like the leaked. It hasn't officially been announced how much it is gonna be, but that's the leaked price. So I was like, well, how much am I gonna be paying Canadian as opposed to like last year's CPU? Um, and so two hundred dollars American in Canadian is two hundred and seventy dollars, or almost two hundred and seventy one. So it's like, that's crazy how bad the Canadian dollar that's is. That's horrible. And we're right next door to the U.S. And we speak the same language. We basically live the same culture. Like, it's it's just crazy how different it is, how much more we have to pay. Yep. We're the same, we're the same market, essentially. I get upset about that. <laughs> As somebody well, who's lived in both Canada and the U.S., it's like, and, and don't get me started on minimum wage in Vancouver or most parts of Canada versus like when I was living in LA, I found out the minimum wage is $15 an hour. It just got raised here to thirteen eighty four. Fifteen dollars $15 American and Canadian would be like 18 or $19. Which is like a good, a good paying job oh, yeah. in, in Vancouver. Like I'm lucky that when I work not acting, I get paid around that. 18 19 20 dollars an hour people are very happy to, to work for that i mean not happy to work for that but no like, because that's not even a livable offered wage here that then they they take it because yeah. it's so hard to find a, a job here that's not minimum wage yeah exactly like i i was very lucky to be able to find a job that i could do that didn't pay minimum wage yeah. and and like i'm just thinking about like if i were making that as minimum wage then then i would be like oh yeah vancouver is totally livable but that's not even minimum wage here. Jeez, if that was, if that was minimum wage, oh my gosh, how much would I be making? We get double minimum wage. Um, so you'd be making like thirty six dollars an hour. God, that'd be nice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's how it works. No. If I would still be getting double minimum wage. Yeah. Because like I'm in the union, like I'm I do stand in on the side for those who don't know, and like. Stand-ins get paid like 83 cents more than background and you can't do stand-in if you're not union So that's why I'm like comparing it to the background wage. I say that we make Like double the non-union background because they just make minimum wage. Yeah Or like 5% more they make I remember when when minimum wage was $12 They made like 1266 or something. I don't oh, know if that's 5% yeah. but I remember that's what it was well, and that's the thing, especially for background, they've been making the same amount since, like, the 80s. I know, it's crazy. That used to be a well-paying job, a well-respected, high-paying yeah. job. Yeah. That's crazy. I mean, I... We, now they're treated both, like crap. We've both been working in the film and television industry for a long time, and, I mean, we were talking about that earlier today, where it's like, I could go to L.A. and try and make it as an actor there, and unfortunately, I can't right now, because there's no point. I have no agent there right now, mm -hmm. but... Um, I could go and try and represent myself and, 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 and go get meetings and stuff like that. But that's, that's a lot of hard work where I don't really know anybody there. And there's actually just probably just as much stuff filming in Vancouver. Well, I was talking to a photographer the other week, the other week, this last week when I had a photo shoot, he was asking like what the difference is between acting here, like trying to get acting work here and trying to get acting work in LA. I was saying, like, I feel like here is just way better because there's, like, eight casting directors. Yeah. You know them all. You have relationships with them all. L.A., 
There's like 2,000 casting directors. Yeah, there's a lot. And there's a lot more people trying to be actors in LA. I That's can, where everybody goes to be an actor. I only, I can only name two casting directors in LA. I could name every casting director here. I mean, just think about it as, as like the population of California alone is this is more than the population of the whole of Canada. Yeah. So just statistically, you're more likely to get work in Vancouver than mm-hmm. you are in LA. Well, and think about it. Especially for me, like, I can't work in the States, but if I could, and I was trying to get auditions, well, if I was trying to get roles in LA, do you know how many 5'5 five, five blonde white girls there are? I'd be competing against, like, 100,000, 200,000 other actors for, for one role, you know? Yeah. It's nuts. It's pretty crazy. The I pool mean, is so big there, and compared to the roles, there's not. I mean, just, com- just think about the numbers on... Um, the star meter on IMDb, which not everybody is on IMDb who's an actor, yeah. right? So I, don't, I haven't even looked at my star meter in a long time. A lot of people obsessively look over it. But like, um, you're going to look at yours yeah. now? <laughs> you could be in the 500,000s. So the way it works is the closer to number one you are, the more famous, I guess. or the Well, more, the more people visit your page. The more people that visit your page or the more popular you are. Because usually people who are in really popular projects like... When season two of Stranger Things came out, all the kids who were in Stranger Things, they were in the top ten of the IMDb star meter. Yeah. So, I've been in the top 10,000 before. What are you? Whoa, I'm 86,000. Oh, that's not bad. I remember when we first started dating, I was in like 600,000. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. I was really high up there. So, that that's just shows, like, that's a, that's a big difference. Yeah. Right? And the, I think the only reason is because of Wonder. Yeah, I mean, still, I mean... That... Which is totally fine. No yeah. shade to, like, anything, anybody. Yeah. I'm not complaining at all. Um, I'm going to look up you yeah, if you don't mind. <laughs> um, but just to put that in perspective, you said you're 86,000 right now? Yeah. You're the top... In the top 86,000 actors <laughs> in the world, right? Like, there are roughly seven and a half billion people on the world, in the world, right? On the world, I guess that's essentially correct. Um... <laughs> Yeah, seven we're not and a half. In the yeah, seven and a half billion people on this planet, and um, we don't actually know if that's for sure the real number. You know, mm-hmm. we don't know exactly how many people are alive right now. It could it's be getting, ten billion. It's getting closer to eight billion, apparently. Yeah, like... I remember when I was a kid, it was actually we would say six, yeah, six or six and a half. I remember that. Well, it hit two billion in nineteen twenty-seven. Okay. I should have started with one billion. One billion was like 18, 1818 or something. And these, again, these are just estimates. Yeah, and then sure. it hit two billion over a hundred years later, and then it only took 30 years to hit three billion. That is nuts. That's a sign that we're populating too fast. Anyways, yeah. you're at 56,000. Oh, that's not too bad. I remember looking at your chart, like, maybe I can do that right now. And I think your top, you went down. You went down 12,000. Yeah, this last week, right? So it used to be at like 44,000. Yeah, because it does it per week. It tells you, you know, how many thousand you went down, how many thousand you went up. Your your lowest, like highest, I don't know, like closest to one was like 8,000 something. Oh, really? I thought it was 10,000 something. So I've been... 8,792. That's really cool. I've, I've only been above you once or below you. I don't know, like... I guess above, right? Because you're going yeah. up to up to number one. Yeah, and that was when Wonder came out. Yeah, I'm gonna look at myself again. I'm looking at my chart to see what the <laughs> highest is or whatever. Yeah. When I say That's highest, a... y'all know what I it's mean. It's so weird that we. It's fun to look at. I'm not trying to be like egotistical or like I find it really interesting. No, but I just find it weird. That That's what we value our ourselves off of. Like, it's not about how good you are. It's about whether your project got... I mean, it is about how good you are. Don't get me wrong. But on IMDb, it's about how popular a project you've been in. It won't go... Okay, 8,449. Oh, okay. So I was above you by 300. That's, by 300. That's nuts Yeah. to me. Like, that's just crazy. Yeah. I mean, it, it start, it, if you think about it, it starts to feel kind of Black Mirror-ish. Like, yeah. with the sort of social ranking and stuff. I mean, in China, don't get me started about that, but they're starting to implement that in a very heavy way. Mm. And, like, I, we just watched a PewDiePie video where he was talking about a social network that kind of ranks you the same way. 
the more time you spend on it, the more kind of worth you are. Mm. And then the more popular you are, the more worth you are. And How you can you even get like, money? Well, you, you could get money, but you can uh, own districts. So you could be the most popular person in your local area mm. and be like the, the owner of it, like the emperor or whatever, so right, weird. of it. And that's kind of, I, I signed up for it. And then like, I used PewDiePie's code because it like supports him and he was all excited about it. And then when I looked through it, it started to feel really weird. I got really unsettled, so I deleted it. And it's like, I'm all for technology. I love sci-fi and I love like dystopian kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But that really made me feel uncomfortable. It was weird. To put things in perspective, for those of you who don't, who don't really know how the star meter thing works on IMDb, Naomi Scott, who plays Princess Jasmine in the new Aladdin, Aladdin just came out. She's number one. The guy who plays Aladdin, Mina Masood, is number two. And Amelia Clark from Game of Thrones is number three. So yeah, that and she just went you. down. So she was probably number she one. She was number one, yeah. Yeah. And that's because Game of Thrones just ended, right? Yeah, Sophie so... Turner's in the top ten, Keanu Reeves. Yeah, John Wick 3 came out. Yeah. So it all depends on what's popular and what's being searched and yeah. SEOs and all the algorithms and whatnot. So, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's uh, just one... <laughs> piece of western culture that's really weird i guess it's not really western culture it's just we we're it's just society we're yeah we obsess over but popularity I mean, and even no it, it, it is western culture because i mean i, I actually the UK, yeah. the uk is like that a bit but most of europe they're not really cen- centered on popularity and like at least to my knowledge i remember being in switzerland and there was like no tabloids and like no like TVs anywhere. You know what I mean? Like you go into a restaurant here, there's a TV. Yeah. Or at least one TV. I don't I never saw one. The only TV I ever saw was in my great grandma's house and it was just this tiny little thing. She only watched Who Wants to Be a Millionaire or whatever. And the news and that was it. Mm-hmm. And there on the news there was never anything about celebrities. It was just politics, weather, like, you know, stuff like that. Do you know if I was just thinking about, like, because you are talking about, like, the UK and stuff. It's like, you could be a successful actor in the UK. E- either through theater, you could probably make a pretty good living through oh, theater, yeah. and theater is huge in the UK. Or, for example, Coronation Street, <laughs> right? That's a show that's been on for years, and I don't know how many episodes. 1960. You, 1960. Started. You said there, there's, like, thousands of episodes. Oh, yeah. Right? They don't stop filming that show, and there are people who've been on it since the beginning, like, that's a successful actor, right? But they're not on the top IMDb star meter. 9,755 episodes yeah. of Coronation Street. Yeah. And that's just like a like a soap opera. It's like probably one of the OG soap operas. It's so good. Yeah? I love it. And, like, all the actors are so good. And they're all just, like, so natural, right? It's not dramatic. It's not not like normal soap opera. It's like, a higher standard. It's a higher standard. And that's yeah. because I'm in the UK. They've always had a really oh, yeah. high standard for Well, and they just have a different style. Remember we watched Harry Potter online? Like, oh, illegally. Yeah, we, we, and, um, we streamed it. <laughs> and it was the UK version. And there were scenes in there that I had never seen because I'd only seen the American version. Like, like, British stuff has a different pace. And we don't need everything explained to us. Like... <laughs> Like, American stuff, it's like everything has to be explained to you over and over again because I guess people think Americans are stupid or, you know, yeah. they, they don't have the attention span. I don't know what it is, but I in think Britain, it's just, they don't do that. I think it's just different nuances in humor and um, and just, like, how they process things. Mm-hmm. Anyways, yeah. I just wanted to say the guy who's been on it the most on Coronation Street has been in 3,428 episodes he's been on it since the beginning and that's only a third of the amount of episodes they've made yeah sorry if i'm sniffling a lot i'm having allergies no worries but this woman has been on it since 1974 so 14 years after it started and she's been in almost as many episodes as him yeah just like 100 less yeah that's crazy it is wow i mean that's the dream right if you (laughs) like if you're on it for that long and i like not a lot of people know this but usually how it works you're on a contract and every year you have to get paid an increase percent might be different in the uk might be different in the uk because i'm sure they don't have that big of a 
of budget. a of a budget. Well, Maybe it's a it BBC. It's a BBC show, right? Mm, what is it? I think it might be on a BBC. I don't know. Um, country of origin, United Kingdom. It doesn't have help a network me. there. I know it should, but it doesn't. Huh. Just says runtime thirty minutes. <laughs> Maybe it says at the top. Um, no. Weird. Usually it does. Yeah. That's weird. Anyways, if you know what network it runs on. Comments and let us know. If you watch it, please tell me. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Because that's amazing. (laughs) Anyways. Yeah, do you guys have any, like, TV shows that you've watched that are, like, that have been on for a long time that maybe are not, like, mainstreamly known. Because, like, I didn't know about Coronation Street until we started dating. Really? Yeah. Or even after, because you didn't talk about it until oh my God. we started my nana, spending time with your who's, grandma. Who was Scottish, would just watch it every single day. Like, if she couldn't watch it during the week, because that's the thing. It would be, like, um, there's an episode Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday... I'm pretty sure. Or maybe it's Tuesday to... Or maybe there's five in a row. I don't know. Whoa. They must shoot every day. They must shoot five days a week. Yeah, but it's only like two minutes of show and then five minutes of commercial. But still... Anyways, she would if she would not miss it. And if she did miss it, then on Sundays, they would have a marathon of all, the, all of the episodes that they showed in the week. That's awesome. On Sunday mornings. And she was so obsessed with it. After she passed away, we found this big box, like a collector's edition of like, like facts about Coronation Street. It was like a, it looked Trivia? like a, it looked like a board game, oh. but it was just all stuff about Coronation Street. Huh, that's crazy. Yeah. See, that's like kind of. <sighs> I mean, I, I'm at a loss for words because like <laughs> the way we consume entertainment is so much different now. Yeah. But it's also the same in a lot of ways because. Like, for example, with YouTube, like, we don't have cable, right? We have, like, Netflix and Amazon, but we watch most of our content through YouTube. We find these creators that we like, and, like, PewDiePie, for example. PewDiePie. PewDiePie. (laughs) PewDiePie. Um, PewDiePie. Sorry. PewDiePie. He's one of the biggest creators, content creators on YouTube. He releases a video every single day. That's, like, a new episode of your favorite TV show every day. Except for, I mean, his episodes are only, like, ten minutes long. Well, I was going to say, he films all of them... Like in one day. Oh, really? For the week. I was going to say, I wouldn't be surprised if they did something very similar. Like if they, Coronation Street, if they filmed like the next week's episode, episodes like on the respective days. Yeah. Like if it just took one day to film one episode. Because they're so short. Yeah, that would make sense. I mean, when we were filming Mr. Young. Sorry, I just got it. Sitting. Don't lean on the table too oh, much. Oh, sorry. I always do that. Um, when we were filming Mr. Young, we would do... Well, first of all, we tried to do an episode in a quarter a week because we tried to get ahead. Then that just became too confusing because after four weeks, we were trying to remember what was happening in that episode. And then we ended up doing an episode and a half, and then every, every once in a while, we would do two episodes a week. So it's like... It's because we're trying to get ahead. It's because we don't we didn't have the same budget as like a respective American show. Yeah. Because that's what we were compared to. But we still aired one episode a week. Yeah. So it's pretty insane how I don't know how they do it now because how they used to do it <laughs> was they would film the show. Yeah. And then once they were like halfway done or even when they were done filming, yeah. they'd start airing. Yeah. Or it would be live. Yeah. But now, like Riverdale, I can't believe it. They start filming, they film June to March. Mm. That's nine months of the year. And they start airing in October. And they only, like, I just, they they end up taking, they take like a a month hiatus in like January or something. But it just blows my mind. I'm like, how do they not like overlap? Yeah. Well, on Mr. Young, we started filming... The first season, we started filming in October, and we started airing in March. Mm. So it's kind of similar. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's crazy, because like what I was saying before with YouTube, it's exhausting for, let's say you're an individual creator, and you're, you're trying to make videos every single day, like mm-hmm. some people do. That's exhausting to be able to... Like, you have no life, because yeah. you're constantly 
filming, you're constantly editing, and you're constantly you're constantly editing your thumbnails, all that stuff. I mean, when I used to do one video a week, I mean, we do one video a week for this, but when I used to do one video a week, just entertainment stuff that I created, random stuff, that was exhausting because it feels like, I mean, it feels like that was this sometimes where it's like, okay, I'm done the video, it's up, I can take a couple days off, but then it's like all of a sudden, like it's Friday today, we wanted to get ahead of it because we're going to have a bit of a busy weekend. Well, we try to film on Fridays anyways. Yeah. Or during the week. Yeah. Because otherwise, it's just it's too little time. Yeah. Because we upload at ten a.m. on Sundays. Yeah. You can't do anything before that. <laughs> we try to like sleep in on Sundays. But... Yeah. Well, and even. It's we try to upload it the night before. Exactly. Too, because it, the way it works is like usually it's a forty minute long podcast. So to export it, it, it takes like three hours. The worst is when you're uploading it at night. And then you check back in the morning and it's like failed or something. Yeah. It's only happened once. But yeah, it's just because we man. didn't realize we didn't have enough space on the computer. But yeah. yeah. Or we exported it and then we like, I don't know why we played it. You, like we never play it, you know, but we, we just this one time played it and it was like stuck. The audio was going, but there was no video. Yeah. It was super weird. That is weird. It was like we knew. <laughs> yeah. it's just funny that kind of thing like so when you kind of subconsciously know that something's gone wrong oh yeah at one time i always think about this i went <laughs> to cut i don't know what i went to cut something it was something like hard so i had to push down on the knife and i rested my hand on it and i was about to put, go full force on the knife and i realized the knife was upside down and i was just like staring at it with my hand on the knife and i was like holy crap <laughs> see not me i was really tired and i went to go cut a bagel with a serrated like bread knife and i thought the sheath was on the knife and it oh, wasn't I forgot but i that. still did that and i luckily i didn't cut myself too deep but it like I, I cut a couple of my fingers like some skin off cut them off no i didn't cut my fingers <laughs> off but you know what i mean it's kind of one of those dumb things when yeah. you're not paying attention i'll never forget when we were living in anaheim i was cutting a bagel towards my hand and like i can't cook I don't think I'd ever cut a bagel in my life. And I cut, like, through, and I just cut, like, half my palm just... It wasn't that bad, though. It was bleeding quite a bit. Yeah. I was, like, freaking out. But, like... It was fine. I didn't need stitches or anything. Not in the kind of way where it's, like, oh, crap, I'm in another country and I've just injured myself. (laughs) I don't think I even had travel insurance. No, I did. I think... My mom never lets me leave the... The country... (laughs) Without. <laughs> without travel insurance yeah well now you don't have to worry about it i spelled vancouver wrong vancouver sorry yeah because i i didn't know but our union like our our medical through our union covers 90 days of travel insurance like mm-hmm. 90 days at a time so you can like leave and go back for another 90 days but sorry we were we went to la in march yeah and i was like i'm not gonna get travel insurance because i'm, I'm pretty sure i'm covered by the union because i made yeah. money last year yeah. right uh, <laughs> it doesn't kick in until June 1st, yeah. so I'm so glad my mom bought me. I bought you. Or you bought me. Bought but you. she was the one who was like, you need to yeah. have well, it. And my mom, too, was like, yeah. do it. Um, us, like, young people are like, oh, we'll be okay, you know. <laughs> and nothing ended up happening. It's not like yeah. I needed to go to the hospital. No, I mean, but that's the thing. is like in Canada, and I just found out recently, I think your mom was saying that it's now free. Like, MSP, medical is almost completely free mm-hmm. in Canada. I Unless mean, you make a lot of money, then you, I think you have to pay a little bit. Yeah, which is fair. Yeah. That's fair. But just, like, the comparison of... I mean, the healthcare quality is different, but um, social, social socialized healthcare, is that what it's called? It works very well, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. But whenever I talk to my mom about it, because she, she works in healthcare in Canada and the U.S., she says the quality of care is a lot better in the States. Because it's privatized. It's privatized. And there's people who want to take that away, which, like, uh, I can kind of see. Like, people are like, we should be more like Canada. And I'm like, mm, like, yeah. it's, they've made healthcare a business. Yeah. And you can't have, like, that's the reason they have high, such high standards, because they want your business. Yeah. But if you take that away, like, it's it's really, it's hard. You can't please everybody. Because if you're gonna if you're gonna make it free in the states, you're gonna be downgrading quality no yeah. matter what. Because yeah. it's not gonna be a business anymore. Yeah. I wonder if there's some way to make it where it's still funded by the government, but 
it's kind of a system that they already have, right? Like, if a hospital has bad service, it gets badly reviewed. Yeah. In absolutely. Canada, that doesn't that doesn't really happen. happen. No. So if in the states there's a hospital that's doing really well, maybe that would get more funding from the government versus a hospital. But that's not really fair. That's kind of well, and it's not fair like statewide because then it's not very democratic. Well, I mean, think about think about when they shut down the the toll bridges sorry for people who don't live here and don't know what i'm talking about but <laughs> we had two toll bridges here and when we switched um like our state our province's government yeah um they took away the tolls on the bridges which people absolutely love because you know like we want to drive over the bridges and not pay right yeah. <laughs> but at first the money was coming out of medical and education before they figured out how to properly, properly <laughs> like could take care of it you know what yeah I mean? And, and that like, that really scared me because I was thinking, great, our medical's already bad and now we're losing even more money towards it, right? And I feel like that would happen in the States. I feel like some, like, depending on the government of, of the state, they may not, they might not allocate that kind of money to hospitals, right? Especially like, there are some closed-minded people and if it's like, you know, taking away women's rights when it comes to like healthcare, I'm not going to get into that. I'm just, just that, we can it. save that for a whole nother podcast. <laughs> we don't need to do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, or, um, I had something else. Oh, like poorer communities, mm-hmm. like communities that are in poverty. I feel like they, so some closed minded people might allocate less money for those places, which would make it even worse. Yeah. Whereas the way it works in the States right now, if a hospital isn't doing well, then it's not going to make money. And eventually, if it has to shut down, it shuts down. But it's not the government's fault. Mm-hmm. Right? It's not like, well, I didn't get this, uh, the same kind of chance the other guy got. And in the States, you can sue hospitals. Yeah, that's pretty cool. You can't sue hospitals here. You won't win. And and that's the problem. You just lose all your money. That's the problem. We've both witnessed a f- more than once bad practice more than twice and more than twice (laughs) more than three times (laughs) bad practice in um personally from family members and stuff unfortunately in in kind of bad ways um bad practice in hospitals sometimes the same hospital a couple times um and uh and you can't do anything about it yeah like terrible practice like you could probably in the states get quite a bit of money for just raising your voice about it Mm -hmm. like I mean, I'm not going to say who because I don't want to, like, step on anybody's toes. But, like, people died yeah. because of it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And my, I mean, both had relatives who were dying in hosp- in that same hospital. We're not going to name any names. <laughs> yeah. um, and got treated pretty terribly. And my relative might very well still be alive if uh, they had been doing their job properly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's why Canadian healthcare... Yes, it's free. Yeah, but it might not be as good as you think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to know what it's like in, for example, the UK or Australia, I think also has socialized health care. I'd like to know where it is. Where it is. <laughs> I would like to know where the health care is. Yeah, I'd like, uh, excuse me, where's the health care? <laughs> I'd like to know what it's like in the rest of Canada. Yeah. Yeah, other, other states, other provinces. I'm actually really curious about, like, the territories. Or Quebec. Yeah, because Quebec is a lot, a lot. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> Getting really allergies, passionate about allergies. Allergies catching up with me. Um, yeah, very passionate. I'd love to know what it's like Quebec because Quebec is much different. They're, They're much very more independent. independent yeah. Um, than the and other there's always provinces. different rules you hear about, like, like you know, you get ads for like medication or whatever, which I'm pretty sure is illegal here, but you get them anyways. Yeah. And it's like, you know, side effects include blah 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 you know consult your doctor if you live in quebec like that type of weird stuff yeah. you're like what <laughs> well see the thing is it's actually not illegal to have uh, advertisements for the commercials here in advertisements advertise, advertisements for the medications oh, in canada yeah. not I, advertisements advertisements, right to me. advertisements for a commercial um adver- it's not illegal for commercials for medications in canada they just can't say what it's for mm. so they can be like um viagra they, I mean, yeah, they could say Viagra, or they could be like, um, Ny- Nyquil or something. I just said Nyquil, but, um, <laughs> something that helps you sleep, but they could just, sh- they won't say anything. They'll just be like, they'll show someone like restless, not sleeping well or what something like that. What do they like do that. on the, 
on on the radio on the radio yeah um i don't know if you can't say what it is because i don't know if they have ads for that kind of thing on the radio but i feel like that's that's what i was talking about like i'd hear because oh. i don't watch tv how would i hear an ad that's like oh yeah that's true i know back. that like this when i was younger and we had cable um like the one for cialis which is like a viagra competitor hmm. It would just show like a middle aged guy and then like a like a muscle car and then like and the then kid goes woman. yeah and the, and the, well the, like the one that I remember was that like like the the dad has like this really nice old like nineteen sixties Mustang and the kid's like can I drive it and he's like sure and then he gives him the keys and the kid's like shocked because he didn't expect to be able to drive the car and he drives off and then the the father's like like looking kind of proud and then turns and his wife's like in the doorway and it's like. I feel great now that I've taken my Viagra. Leave, son. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the Viagra's kicking in. See ya, son. <laughs> Wife, get over here. But I'll um, have to go to the hospital soon, so be back. Yeah. Good thing it's a fast car. Just don't crash it. Yeah. Yeah. But then it'll like be like, see Alice. And then it'll just say, consult your doctor. It won't say, you know, mm. what it's for. Um, uh, another thing for Quebec is like, your chance to win a million dollars. Um, I was I was, I was going to try to do the like fast low talking where it's like oh yeah yeah, but I can't find the word you know like not not eligible if you live in Quebec yeah like, <laughs> exactly or or it's like you'll see um like for example like uh, Tim Hortons roll up the rim mm-hmm. like those cups every year they have you roll up the rim after you drink your coffee and you can win a prize and it'll be like you know win a Honda Civic. Um, and then Quebec excluded or something yeah. like that. And then it'll say it in French. <laughs> yeah. Or, or you, or you'll see one that's like Quebec only. Yeah. Right. Only Which available in Quebec. I mean, Quebec is a really big province. I keep wanting to say state. That's so weird. I find it weird when people say Quebec. Quebec. Is, is that an American thing or do Canadians say it? No, that's a Canadian thing. Actually, that's how I grew up saying it. Cause my, my mom pronounces some things mm. differently. Um, so it, it might be um, an Eastern can- Canadian oh, thing, yeah. Quebec. Oh, yeah. But the actual proper French way of saying it is Quebec. Quebec, yeah. We, we learned Quebecois. that in, in French. So it would be like, call it Quebec. You know, Quebec. 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 Yeah, us Canadians learning French. Well, and it kind of sounds Spanish. Okay? Okay. Right? Quebec. Q-U-E. Yeah. Quebec. What Bec? What Bec? <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> Uh, yeah Canada. Canada is so weird it is and like when you live here people feel so strong about the politics but I get kind of like um I don't know what the word is like passionate. I don't passionate or dispassionate about it like I don't care as much because we literally have so few people in Canada for the size of the country and in comparison to other countries that are like even smaller like we don't have that many people yet people are so passionate not only about canadian politics like angrily passionate (laughs) but also american (laughs) politics like yes they're our neighbor and their economy does affect our economy but don't we want to be independent (laughs) like i love it when canadians are like i think i've said this on the podcast already i'm gonna say it every time i think of it when canadians are like not my president about trump it's like, yeah, you're Canadian. He's not your president. We don't have a president. <laughs> we have a prime minister. I love that too. And like when we had the the marches, we had a march. Yeah. For like not my president. It's like protesting in a country about a president that's not even a part of that country. That didn't make any sense to me. Yeah. Because who's gonna see that here and go? Oh, I'm gonna change it in the U.S. I like mean, that's... I guess we have a Trump Tower, so maybe. Were well, they... that was that was the thing. The Trump Tower opened, and then they were like, "Not my president!" So they protested in front of the Trump Tower. It's a hotel. It's not a political um, mon- monument or like. Um... Yeah, it's not like we have a statue of him. Could you imagine? Well, it's not like it's not like it's the U.S. consulate. Yeah. That's where you should be protesting if if you're upset about the neighboring countries politics i, I try but not it's to not get... even our business yeah and I, even as somebody who can live and work in the states i don't feel like it's my business well and the thing is if you're really that concerned about the u.s's relations with canada then vote somebody good in as prime minister yes it's not our business who the u.s elects 
And I know it's fun to get offended. And we live in a, a we live in a society. We live in a society, but we also live in a uh, what's become. Well, first of all, it's like uh, I have a right to get offended. Culture, yeah, right. Like that's my action as my my right as a citizen. Like that's what becomes such a focus. But mm-hmm. now it's become a cancel culture. So if you don't like something, let's cancel it. Let's, let's end gang it. Up let's on all them. gang up on it and talk about how we're being, you know, wronged. It's like in the nineteen thirties something bad happened you just work harder you know what i mean it's like oh well whatever bad luck yeah right politics aside because it i guess pe- people were people are passionate about politics well yeah and, at all times and the u.s has every right to protest the freedom of speech i mean so do we right absolutely i mean and i'm were... not saying you can't protest i'm just saying it's kind of weird that you're protesting an american public figure when they it has nothing to do with canada yeah I was I had something else I was gonna say and then I interrupted myself with oh, another point. Yeah. But anyways. I think you were gonna talk about the freedom of speech thing. We were talking about that earlier today. Oh right? yeah. Like like how people get offended by what other people say, but then they say oh. something back and they get offended because that person got offended. Like what did I say earlier today? We have freedom of speech. But and that's fine. Mm-hmm. But you have to be prepared to deal with the consequences. Yeah, exactly. Nobody's taking away your freedom of speech. You can say whatever you want. But if you're going to be a dick, yeah. and if you're going to say something rude, if you're going to attack someone, if you're going to harass someone, sure, that's freedom of speech, but it doesn't make it right. No. So you got to deal with the consequences of your actions. Well, and also at the same time, it's like, when did we get to a point where if someone has a different op- opinion or a different uh, value than you? Suddenly that, they're a horrible person. That suddenly they're a terrible person. They deserve to go to hell or they deserve to die in some people's opinions. Oh, yeah. Like. Uh, we could, I mean, it's almost not worth it at this point to get into the whole, like, um, the whole, ab- like, abortion thing and anti-vax thing and all that kind of stuff. But it doesn't directly affect anybody else, right? Like, you were talking about how, like, if you wanted, if somebody wanted to get an abortion, right, it's not because they, they didn't, or, or someone said the answer is just, like, put them up for adoption. It's like, there's a lot of other things. It's not a simple answer right it's either you don't want to go through that whole process of being pregnant and having to um give birth sorry guys it's getting a little dark we will change the subject in a second um but it's also like if you did go through all that and then decide not to keep it and then put it up for adoption there's also a whole moral thing is like there's tons and tons of kids in the system that are are being raised terribly and having a, a a terrible life basically and you're contributing to that we need to focus on solving one problem before we make another one worse to end this discussion, yeah. I just want to say it is totally fine to be against abortion. Yeah. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. You don't have to get one. Yeah. But it is not okay to tell another woman what they, well, any other person, not necessarily just a woman, what yeah. they can and can't do with their body, yeah. in my opinion. I mean, we were talking about that today with, like, you said if you were a man, you thought it would be really cool to, like, donate <laughs> sperm. <laughs> Um, and then I and was like, bunch of babies running and, around. And a bunch of babies running around. I said that made me really uncomfortable. Like I would never want, like I'd never do that because I wouldn't want to have the, uh, like, I don't like the idea of having, um, a child, re- a child or even just relatives out there that I'm not like that aware of know, yeah. that, that I could be responsible for. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's just me. Like, that's I totally just my respect value. that. And yeah. you respect that. And I respect the fact that you thought it was kind of cool. I think that'd be so to- <laughs> cool. Cause like as a woman, you can't just sell your eggs and like, like, I'm sorry, lack of a better term, like, jizz them out and, (laughs) you know, like, yeah, well, (laughs) it's like an invasive surgery and you could like fucking die. Sorry, I'm getting, it's nighttime and I'm getting sweary. Well, whatever. It's freedom of speech, right? It's nightcast. (laughs) Nightcast. This, maybe we'll make this a regular thing. Let us know, guys, if you like the nightcast. It's a little more casual. Yeah, we'll do like once a month or something where we just talk about whatever. We actually had something planned and we didn't do it. We We just talked the whole time. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, we were actually going to play like a, a version of newlywed, newlywed game. So if you guys want to see that, let us know. We can do it next week or yeah. something. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, like, we're very open-minded. We don't want to like offend anybody on our opinions. No. We're just discussing things. And people can have their own opinions yeah. if you're against something or not against yeah. something. I don't care. That's I'm totally open to other people's opinions. We're not trying to change your mind or no, change no. your values. Like, that was the one thing that I've experienced people were, they're like, let's just discuss this. And then they try and tell me that I'm wrong on my values. Mm-hmm. It's like, 
one of my core values, you guys heard me say this before, is as long as no one's getting hurt, everything's okay. Mm -hmm. But as soon as you try and tell someone that they're living their life wrong and that they're morally wrong and there's a lot of stuff wrong with them, then that starts to hurt a little bit. So, And on that note, sorry, I have to burp. Hold on. Okay, pardon me. On that note, <laughs> our charity... Wait, do you have anything else to say? No. Okay, on that note, <laughs> I ruined the segue like four times already, three times. Anyways, on that note, <laughs> <laughs> I need to go to bed. Our charity for this week's podcast. Is the Crisis Intervention and Suicide Prevention Center of BC. Um, I read a, last year on Reddit that someone had called the suicide prevention hotline, the Vancouver one, twice in one night and nobody answered. And that's kind of fucked up. <laughs> so yeah, that, and that, would... don't even excuse that language because that's appropriate. Yeah. Appropriate wording. They're open 24 hours a day. And they obviously need help. So yeah. he, they've been, I'm going to read from their website so you guys can hear a little bit about them if you don't know what the crisis center is they've been providing it just changed sorry <laughs> that's been happening to me a lot lately on the Why internet where change? i'll like go to click on something and then it'll move who else hate who else hates that you go to click on something and it moves and you click on something you didn't mean to click on it sorry. won't go back they've been providing emotional support to youth adults and seniors in distress since 1969 they've been providing emotional support for everybody anybody who needs it if you need support please please don't try to go through whatever you're going through alone yeah. because that just it builds up and it builds up and you need help it's okay, totally okay to ask for help absolutely 100 percent okay to ask for help it's okay to admit that you're not okay and it's best to go to a family member or a friend because they know you and they can they know what's best for you mm -hmm. i mean most of the time some people you know their yeah. relationships with people aren't that great but if you need somebody to listen or to help you and you don't want, you know, I know a, a big thing with like depression and stuff is you feel like you're burdening your family members and stuff. You're not never a burden to your family members, trust me. Yeah. But there's always the 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 suicide um <laughs> can't the word crisis the line. crisis line. Yeah. And oh my god, did I just say that there's always the suicide? No, I meant the suicide hotline. <laughs> 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 Okay. okay, I'm sorry. I need to go to bed. No, that's okay. <clears throat> um, you can donate on their website. Um, I mean, donate to your local one. I'm just bringing up the Vancouver one because we live in Vancouver and yeah. because of that post on Reddit, the guy saying, or girl, I don't know, the person saying that they called twice in one night and nobody answered. They they are 100% off of donations. That's how they... That's how they yeah that's how they operate that's how they operate and um i think what we'll do is for this podcast we won't just link the the website for the bc crisis center what we'll do is we'll link some other ones for some other major areas or maybe just the canada canada one and the u.s one as well because if you are going through something through something we really just like reach out and talk to somebody you just Absolutely. maybe a five minute talk or a ten minute talk get some stuff out i mean talk sometimes talking to somebody you don't know can help because you're always worried about being judged the whole point of these people is to just listen and help you through something. So if you are, like, please don't hesitate. Like, absolutely, urge you to do that. Um, we always put the the website in the description, so it'll be there along with the numbers and everything. Yeah. But um, I'll just say it out loud so yeah. that it resonates in your brain. Crisiscenter.bc.ca is where you can go to read about them and donate. <sighs> and and usually if you just google crisis hotline oh absolutely um, the It'll local be... one will pop up yeah yeah <clears throat> so, don't be afraid to ask for help ever yeah i mean sometimes it's so easy to just like lock everything in you yeah. know and nothing worse can happen from talking exactly and anyways on that note we're gonna go to bed yeah we've had a good night we hope you did too, and we hope your next nights. We hope many a moon is good <laughs> from now on. And uh, let us know as as usual what you thought about this podcast. We're always open to discussion down below, to chat, hang out. Or in our email podcast kids these days at gmail dot com. Yeah, somebody did email us, right? Yeah, it yeah. was uh, one of my longtime Twitch viewers. Which I need to get back on Twitch, guys. I know. I'm sorry. I'm building a computer slowly collecting it part you by part. You can use mine. 
I know, but I'm just so excited about I know about you the want computer. your old one. Yeah. You want to have your little setup. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> Good night, guys. Thank you so much for watching and listening. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.